mine. Toys. Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing you another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the NECA T1000. This is a Kenner tribute retro line from Terminator 2 action figure. It's sort of a homage to the old Kenner T1000 they made. This guy here can change colors when he's under hot or cold temperatures, typically using hot or cold water to make that happen. The main reason I got this guy is because I'm obsessed with police officers and army building for my Batman universe and I've gotten so many T1000s I had to get this variety as well. Plus, I had this toy as a kid. I also had the T800 with the robotic arm. Those two are really cool. This is a really, really cool wave. I'm only getting this guy from the wave because frankly I can't not get this police officer at this point even though he won't effectively be a cop in my Gotham City. But I had to get him to complete my T-1000 collection. So let's check out this package. It looks very similar to the Kenner one. It's made on an old card like that. Terminator 2, new, white hot T-1000 with interchangeable arms. I love down here we've got the NECA logo, but it's done in the old Kenner style. Really cool. On the back here shows other Terminator figures, specifically the ones from this wave. Two different endoskeletons. I'm not sure where this one came from. I thought the wave had these three figures. Then we've got some regular figures. Of course, I have all of them. Love the ultimate police officers. And then we've got the upcoming John Connor and his motorcycle. I absolutely cannot wait to get that. It's going to be really cool to have another sort of punk kid, civilian, for my action figure city universe. So, let's go ahead, open this guy up, and see how awesome he is. Well, here's the figure out of the package in its entirety with all the accessories laid out. He comes with a combined total of five hands, three regular hands, and two with his sort of metal blade accessories. He also comes with a pistol, pretty similar to the other T-1000s. No new sculpting, no new parts, but still pretty cool. This guy, he's black. He looks like a police officer charred to a crisp. I can't wait to check out his color changing features. We can see his some of his metal parts are not painted that way. So let's check out his accessories. First of all, his hand comes out very easily. I'm going to end up using the trigger finger as probably my main hand for this guy. Used to hold the pistol, of course. Goes in there with fair ease. You're going to have just one left hand open hand. Next, let's look at his pistol. Pretty standard pistol here. Nothing really too special about it. It's identical to the ones that came with the other T-1000 releases. So I'm using his trigger finger here. His trigger hand, rather. Pistol goes in there nicely. Finger fits into the trigger hole. In addition to that, you can also take it out and it can go into his holster. I absolutely love a functioning holster on an action figure. Next, let's check out the height of this figure. This is a NECA figure. They're traditionally the seven inch scale. So let's see how tall this guy actually is. Looks like this guy measures up to be little more than six and three quarter inches. The top of his head is right at the bottom of my finger, just a little bit under seven. Next, let's check out his articulation. And then we will look at comparison shots versus other T-1000 figures, Terminator figures, and police figures in general. So, first of all, his head goes around, no problem, up, down, really can move around with complete ease. Then he's got his shoulders, and I must say, moving this guy around, it feels so smooth. It doesn't feel like there's any concern about breaking it or anything like that. Shoulders go out this far. They can go up, down, move all around, absolutely no problem. It's almost a pleasure moving this guy around. I notice as I touch him, his color start to change. The black is obviously for cold, and then it's going to be blue or clear for warm, but we will get to that in just a minute here. Elbows not double-jointed. 
in, out. They also have a swivel. His wrists can move around and it has a little bit of up and down motion as well. Waist articulation does push against this walkie-talkie, so be wary there. Legs can go out about that far. It looks like this one's hindered from his holster, but it's really not. That soft plastic can be moved around pretty easily. His leg can actually go out pretty far. Single joint knees with a swivel in addition to that. His feet go around, up, down just a tiny, tiny bit, and a little bit of rocking going on as well. While we're on the subject of articulation, I wanted to mention one other thing. The front of his torso does come off with fair ease. The reason this would be is pretty much a reuse from previous T-1000 parts where he could swap out and have his head sort of exploded. They did this with both different versions of the Ultimate T-1000. There was, I don't believe, an action feature of the old figure flying part. And absolutely nothing on the card suggests that. So it's completely unnecessary for this figure. But they did it because they used the exact same mold as before. So this guy will be pretty much completely black if he's cold. And he's going to be either clear or blue when he's warm. Let me pop him in the freezer, get him completely cold, and then we'll heat him up and see how he looks warm. I only put this guy in the freezer for, I don't know, 90 seconds or so, and it was enough to turn him black again. But I'm going to show you how quickly he will change under actual water. All right, now here's my kitchen sink. Just to show you this guy starting off black, meaning that he was cold. Let's go ahead and turn on some hot water here and check out how quickly he turns. You can already see it happening. Give him a nice little shower here. So I guess this is the color he turns into when he gets warm. Not completely consistent, but pretty cool how quickly it happens. Now as we turn it to cold water, and it's cold now, it's already cold. Notice he's getting dark really quickly. My sort of point to showing you all this is that the action feature doesn't take too long to go into effect. I think it's pretty cool and I do remember having this guy as a kid. And then just so you know, his accessories, additional hands also turn blue with heat, you know, sort of a clear, light, transparent blue. Just not the actual pegs that go inside of his arms don't, but that really shouldn't be a problem because they will be inside of his arms. Now this is the lightest his coloring gets if you heat him up completely. I notice the soft plastic material becomes a slightly different shade than the rest of his body, like his holster and his sort of crotch area. Notice his pistol is not made out of the same color changing material. Makes for a pretty nice effect if you ask me. Could work good for, I don't know, Mr. Freeze taking a regular T-1000 and him freezing him and then he looks like this. And in turn you could have Firefly burning a T-1000 and turning him into the black version. Here he is compared to some other NECA Terminator 2 figures. On the far left, we've got the Ultimate T-800. Then, of course, the Kenner T-1000. And then we've got the non-Ultimate Kyle Reese from Terminator 1. And on the right, we've got the Ultimate Sarah Connor from T-2. Here he is next to the original NECA T-1000. This was NECA's first wave of Terminator figures. This one was specifically called Galleria Mall T-1000 because this is where he tried to capture John Connor in the Galleria Mall. Galleria is like an arcade. I've really never heard that term used in real life describing an arcade. But anyway, this was when NECA, embarrassingly, was almost making statues. They must have taken notes from McFarlane toys. This guy has pretty much no articulation in his legs. His feet do move around, sure. He's got a waist, a little bit of arm, elbow hand, neck, that's it. Kind of like a statue in some ways. A lot of quality control issues on these guys. I bought a couple of them and they almost all broke at the elbows and ended up getting super glued. But you can see they've come a long way since then, especially articulation wise. 
And then the next T-1000 they released, at least in this sort of standard police look, would be the Steel Mill T-1000. Looks almost exactly the same as the other guy, except that he's got this sort of malfunction going on with his foot turning into metal. He also has boots on, which is kind of like the motorcycle cop. And he has, I believe, yes, knee articulation, which was not included on this guy. But they just kept releasing T-1000 figures like this and reusing the same sculpts. Not that I minded. They made liquid metal T-1000. 100% the same sculpt as this guy. Very little bit of articulation. Painted silver. Easy, easy re-release. And then eventually they did re-release the Galleria T-1000 labeled Ultimate T-1000 with enhanced articulation and pretty much all the accessories from the other guys combined. He can move in all the right places like him a lot better than the other ones. His outfit is a little bit of a lighter blue color compared to the original release. But they didn't stop there. They kept releasing T-1000 figures. They released a T-1000 motorcycle cop figure. I can't tell you how excited I was when these figures were coming out. There weren't a lot of options for six, seven inch police officer figures back then. And I was so happy they just kept releasing different variations to make my army unique. And then, of course, eventually they made an ultimate motorcycle cop T-1000, who is quite a bit more articulated and actually fit on the motorcycles that I had for my police. Of course, I can't just mention a bunch of T-1000 motorcycle cops without showing you the actual motorcycles. Here they are, driving down the city, checking out for some bad guys. Absolutely love that they released the ultimate version of this. Of course, the regular version never would have had a chance to get on these motorcycles. And then in addition to those motorcycle cops, they also made a liquid nitrogen version of the motorcycle cop. I absolutely love using either this guy or the liquid metal version of the regular Galleria police officer as Mr. Freeze victims in my Batman world. And then when I heard NECA was doing Terminator 5 figures, I was like, oh, please, please release the T-1000 police guy from that movie and boy they sure did as an ultimate release pretty much the same sculpt but I was so happy they made another variation for my Gotham City Police Department I've actually also got the old McFarlane T-1000 he doesn't really work for a police officer because of all his bullet holes but got him just because I have all these T-1000s now here are absolutely all of my NECA T-1000 figures well, there is the one McFarlane in there. There's a combined total of 20 of them here. I was so excited when they first made these figures and I was getting some police for my Batman world. And then, boy, one thing left another. I did some head swapping. These guys' heads are not easy to replace because the neck is one piece with the head. Some figures I did have some good luck with were the... I don't even know, I'm sure what company. It was like Diamond Select or Art Asylum, Star Trek Enterprise figures. Their heads attach pretty nicely on here. For example, I've got two Malcolm Reed figures here, two different heads. Decided to put a mustache on one to try to make him a little bit different than the other one. Anyway, 20 T-1000s. Of course, there's a few of them here that won't work as regular cops. But boy, talk about army building. All in all, this is a pretty nice figure for what it is. For my personal uses of being a police officer in my Gotham City, it doesn't have a lot of uses because of his coloring. It does have some appeal to me for nostalgia reasons because I actually owned the Kenner toy as a child. And for me being a completist and obsessed with T-1000s, Gotham City Police Department officers, etc., etc., boy, you should see the rest of my police force if you think that was something. Anyway, if I were to give this figure a rating, I'd probably give it something like a 6 out of 10. Not because it's a bad figure, but just because for my specific unique purposes, it doesn't serve much purpose in my collection. I do enjoy it for what it is, and it does hit in all the right places. I did not get the other figures from this wave, simply because I don't feel like I need them in my Batman world. I didn't really need this guy either, but I definitely had to pick the figure up. Thank you guys for watching the video. This is D Hunter. If you liked the video, press like below. If you want to see additional videos from me, press subscribe. 
If there's anything that you want to say about the video, please comment below. If there's anything you did not like about the video, please comment below. If you have any action figure review requests, please post them below. Once again, thank you for watching. This is D Hunter. I will talk to you guys real soon.